Hi, welcome to my video on the re summary of quadratic functions. Uh, the reason I'm doing a summary, because it just puts all the units back together, certain questions, just want to uh, do the review. To, it's different than, I have a review, it, which is the next video, but I just wanted to do the summary of all most that you learned in this unit on quadratic functions. And besides, it's the uh, function notation f of x. So the f of x equals negative 2x squared plus 4x plus 6. Notice the f of x notation. Notice also the f of x can be the y. So you could have y equals negative 2x squared plus 4x plus 6. But I just wanted to use the function notation different than the y, but it's the same thing. Number one, find the f of 3. The f of 3 means x is 3. So we will put 3 in the place of x. Very similar to what we did before, but sometimes the function notation throws students off. So we'll square first to get a 9. PEMDAS says we have to do the exponents inside the brackets, but there's no inside to do. It's already simplified. So we do the exponent. Then we multiply and divide left to right. So it's a negative 18 plus, that's uh, negative 18 plus 12 plus 6. So it gives me uh, 0. So that means the f of 3 equals 0 which means it's probably uh, one of the, because y is equal to zero, that's coming out to be zero, that's probably one of the x-intercepts. Okay, let's continue. Number two, find x if the f of x equals 2x plus 2. So the f of x equals 2x squared plus 4x plus 6, that means that negative 2x squared plus 4x plus 6 equals 2x plus 2. So we want to find the values of x. So what these two expressions, this one, 2x plus 2, equals this one. So we'll, no simplification on each side to do, so we'll move all the variables, the numbers, to the left side. So the 2x becomes negative 2x. The plus 2 becomes a minus 2 equals 0. We'll simplify. 2, uh, 4, subtract 2 is plus 2x, and 6, subtract 2 is plus 4, and we have a quadratic, so I could do two things. I will do, I will do, I could take the negative 2 out by factoring and get x squared minus x minus 2, or if I want, I could divide by negative 2. If I divide by negative 2, I'll get x squared minus x minus 2 equals 0. I could do either way. But if you did factor, then you still have to factor this trinomial here, which is a quadratic x squared is x and x. The product is negative 2. The sum is negative 1. Factors of 2 are 2 and 1. So we multiply to get a negative, and add to get a negative must be negative 2 plus 1. And that factorization here is just this theory without the negative 2. But because I factored, we can't use the negative 2. The zeros or the solutions come from x minus 2 equals 0 or x plus 1 equals 0. So x is 2 or x is negative 1. So that's the values that will make these two expressions equal. So the f of 2 will give you the same value. So the f of 2 here, placed in, will give you, if I put 2 in, this, so if I put 2 in, I'll get 2, going into place of x, I get 4 plus 2 is 6. And if I put 2 in here, the f of 2 gives me negative 2, 2 squared plus 4, x is 2. I square root of 4, that's a negative 8, plus 8, plus 6, 
I cancel out and I get a 6. So the f of 2 in both expressions will give me the y value or the f of x equal to 6. And if you put the negative 1 in both of these, you'll get the same answer. So there's two values of x that will make these two expressions equal. Number 3, find x, f of x, if the f of x equals 6. So the f of x equals 6, so that means x, so the f of x is 6. f of x is 6, f of x. So what value of x will do this? So the f of x is 6, so we have negative 2x squared plus 4x plus 6 equals 6. So the f of x is 6. The f of x is equal to this trinomial. So that means that this trinomial is equal to 6. The 6 is cancel out. So I get a negative 2x squared plus 4x equals 0. The GCF is a negative 2x. Take out, divide a negative 2x into negative 2x squared and you get an x. Uh, 4x divided by negative 2x is negative 2. So we get two answers because it's a quadratic. So negative 2x equals 0 divided by negative 2. x equals 0. And x equals 2. So we get 0 and a negative 2. So that means that x equals f of 2. That's the same as saying 2. The f of 2 is 6. Or we got 0 and the f of 0. So that means 0 will equal 6 because the f of x, the f of 2, is 6. And the f of 0 is 6. Because when x is 0, you get a 6. When x is 2, the f of 2, you get a 6. So it's the same. Remember, the f of x is the same as a y. So I just went over the function notation. Now, the same equation again, just taking the same equation and working out all the problems that I have assigned. Find the vertex. Again, this is the f of x, and again, you could say y equals negative 2x squared plus 4x plus 6. So the, to find the vertex, you need to get the x coordinate. The x coordinate is a negative b over 2a. So a is negative 2, b is 4, c is 6. So that's the negative of 4, b is 4, and a is negative 2. So it's a negative 4 over negative 4, which is 1. Since we have 1, we'll sub 1 back into the equation, and we'll work out the y value of the vertex. 1 squared is 1, negative 2 times 1, negative 2, plus 4, plus 6. So that gives us an 8. So the vertex is 1, 8. Now we want to find the y-intercept. And the y-intercept lies on the uh, y-axis. And the y-intercept has x equals 0. So if you put x equals 0 here, now you could go uh, 0 into this equation, or you can go the f of 0 into this equation. But whatever one you do makes no difference. You can go the f of 0 because x is 0, into this equation. So it's the same as putting it in here, only got a y. So that gives you 0 squared is 0 times negative 2 is 0. 4 times 0 is 0. And again, you can see that you had x is 0, 6. But if you look at this equation closely, if you put 0 in, this term cancels out. Put 0 here, you get a 0. So in this standard form, when you let x equal 0, you'll get this number always as on the end, which is what we have. The x-intercept is 6, which is 0, comma 6. Now the y-intercepts lie on the, sorry, find the x-intercepts. The x-intercepts lie on the x-axis, and when you lie on the x-axis, that means that your y-coordinate is 0. So we're going to let you can let the y coordinate be 0, or you can let the f of x equal 0, either or. But you have negative 2x squared plus 4x plus 6 equals 0. And we have to solve this. So we have 
we can factor out the negative 2. Negative 2 divided in, <coughs> excuse me, negative 2 divided into negative 2x squared is x squared. 4x divided by negative 2 is negative 2x, and 6 divided by negative 2 is negative 3. That's factored further because it's a x squared is two factors, x and x. Factors of 3 are 3 and 1. And the product is negative 3. The sum is negative 2, so it must be negative 3 plus 1. Why? Multiply. Negative 3. Multiply. Or sorry, add. Negative 2. So x minus 3 equals 0. x plus 1 equals 0. x is 3. Or x is negative 1. Note the negative 2 has no bearing on finding the intercepts because you can't you can't say negative 2 equals 0. So that is the negative 2 is just a constant times whatever whatever value gives you 0. So if you put 3 in the place of x here, put 3 here, you get a 0 here. So 0 times these numbers gives you 0. If you put a negative 1 in the place of x and a negative 1 in the place of x, the negative 1 plus 1 gives you 0, and 0 times these numbers will give you 0. So negative 2 has no bearing on finding the x-intercepts or the values of x which will make y 0. So the x-intercepts are 3, so that's 3 comma 0, and the x-intercepts are negative 1 comma 0. Find the axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry, two ways to do it. The vertex is 1, comma, 8. So if the vertex is 1, comma, 8, the axis of symmetry is a perpendicular line going down through the vertex. So the axis of symmetry is x equals 1. It's a vertical line down through the x coordinate of the vertex. Or we could say the axis of symmetry is equal to x equals negative b over 2a. So that's the same as what we did here. So if you, pro, you, if you work this out, that not only gives you the x-coordinate vertex, it also gives you the axis of symmetry, which if you look up here, it works out to be a 1. So the axis of symmetry is x equals 1. Now we're going to take all this information and graph it. So its vertex is 1, 8. So x is 1, y is 8, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 8 is right there. So that's his vertex. Notice this parabola is negative, so it's opening down. And we have a y-intercept of 6. So the y in 5, 6 is right here. Y-intercept of 6, so this 0, comma 6. And it has x-intercepts of 3 and negative 1. So x is 3. y is negative 1, the x-intercepts, and as you can see, it, the axis of symmetry is straight down through the vertex, and it's x equals 3, sorry, x equals 1, my, what am I thinking about, I see the 3 here, it's moving down through the x is 1 right there, so x equals 1, I just said x equals 1 was the axis of symmetry. So x equals 1 is the axis of symmetry. That, what does that mean? That means all coordinates, x is 1 for all points that lie on this line. But the line is, is the axis of symmetry. It's broken. It's not a part of the graph. And now we'll draw the parabola. So it's got a y-intercept of negative of 6. Y-intercept of 6 is coming down like this. And the other one side is coming down the same way as symmetrical. Notice two units to the right, you get three. Two units to the left, you get a negative one. It's symmetrical. So all points. So that means if you move one unit to the left here, you get six. Move one unit to the right, you get six. So this point right here is x is two and y is 6, and this one here is x is 0, and y is 6. Remember, the parabola is symmetrical. If you move left and right the same number of units, you'll get the same y value. 
let's keep uh, just doing the summary. And we have the same equation again, but this time we're going to write the equation, express it in f of x equals a x minus h all squared plus k. And this is what we call the vertex form. But we've seen it before as y equals. And it's the same equation, only this is the function notation. So we'll work it out in terms of the, uh, so in terms of f of x. But let's do it in terms of y first and then change it. So how will we do it? Well, we can do it the easy way, x equals negative b over 2a. And we already did that because we already worked out that 4, a was negative 2, b was 4, c was 6. So we already worked this out as negative 2. So negative 4, negative 4, x is 1. And we worked out the y value to be, if we look back, we work out the y to be, y came out to be 8. So the vertex we found before was 1, 8. So that means the equation, notice that a is negative 2. If the vertex is 1, 8, that means it's x minus 1 squared plus 8. Because whatever the x coordinate is, when you sub it in it, inside of this bracket, it changes. So 1 becomes negative 1. But the 8 don't change. That's one way to get the vertex. And while I'm at it, I'll explain it another way. Let's pretend we have y. Want to do it another way now. It didn't work out this way for a long time. We'll isolate. We'll move these terms into each other like this. I'll factor out the negative 2. And now, because I have the negative 2 factored out, I'll take a half of negative 2 which is 1 and squared, that makes this a perfect squared trinomial. So I took a half of negative 2 to get 1, and 1 squared is 1. This is a perfect squared trinomial. Now notice I put a 1 here that wasn't on the right side before. Because I put a 1 here, I really put negative 2 times 1. So there's a negative 2 here that's not on the right side. So to balance it, that's a negative 2, so I'll add 2 to balance the right side. So the equation becomes, and this trinomial is factorable, square. So that's x squared, which is x. A half of negative 2 is a negative 1, plus 8. So that's another way by completing the square on this standard form. Or we can go x equals negative b over 2a, plug it back in, and we get the vertex this way. Since we have the vertex form, then the mapping rule becomes the x is, that's an x minus 1, so this is an x plus 1, and the y uh, of the, the y uh, expression on the mapping rule is 2y plus 8, 2y plus 8. So we change this one to a plus x plus 1, and what you see here is negative 2 times y plus 8. We practiced that before. And based on that, what well, is the transformation on the, remember, this is the basic form. It's the basic form of a parabola. y equals x squared. So based on the mapping rule, I always reflect first. So, as you can see, looking at this, this is 1 added to the x, so that means it's gone right. Because we have a negative with the y, is reflected in the x-axis. Because we have 2 times the y, we have a vertical stretch. Vertical because it's you're multiplying by the y. 2 times the y. And plus 8 means it moved up 8. So, putting all that together, that's what that's saying. I always do, it's reflected. Because I always do an R, an S, and a T. Reflect, so it's ref reflected in the x-axis because of the negative. The stretch is a vertical stretch of 
2 because of the 2. And the translations is 1 right. And plus 8 is 8 up. So that's the transformation that occurred on this basic parabola to come to this equation right here, which is in vertex form, or this equation, which is in standard form. Okay, now we have a parabola. Let's do number 12. State its domain. The domain of every parabola is always x belongs to the real numbers. A parabola always has its domain real numbers. All numbers. All real. All real numbers. That's the domain of every parabola, which is written as, notice the parabola is in this form. It could be ax squared plus bx plus c. It could be a times x minus h all squared plus k. Or it could be a times x minus s and x minus t. That's the different forms. But all these forms, no matter how the parabola is expressed, the domain is reals. But the range is different. Now, let's draw a little picture of what we have over there. We had this. So the parabola was doing this and this. So the parabola, the vertex of the parabola is 1, 8. The range, remember, I forgot to say, the domain is the x values. The, the range are the y values. So notice that the range, the y values, are starting at 8 and going down. So the y values are starting at 8, and 8 is included. So it's the y values are less than or equal to. Equal to 8, and the y values are coming down. Notice there's, if 8 is right here, if that's an 8 for the y right there, then there's no values of y above the 8. They're all below, coming down. So 8 is a 7, a 6, a 5, 0, negative 1, negative 2. Notice this point right here, whatever it is. Notice these, this, this, these two points have that y value. These two points have that y value. These two points have this y value of 0, etc. And notice the range. That's another way. Let's look at the equation. The equation is this one. We notice that that's negative. Because it's negative, the parabola is opening downward. That means it's, in terms, it's opening down because it's negative. So if we find a, the vertex, or we have the equation, the vertex of the equation in this form is the y value is 8. So it's going down from 8, so it's less than or equal to 8. Once we have the vertex and we know it goes down, then it's the y value of the vertex that it goes up or down from. But because it's negative, it will go down from 8. What is the vertex? A maximum point or a minimum point? Well, if this is the vertex and it's going down, then this is a maximum point. In other words, it's what? It's the highest point in the graph. If it, if it went if the parabola went this way, then this would be the minimum point because it's the lowest point in the graph. But the parabola goes this way when a is greater than zero. When a is greater than zero, the parabola opens upward. When a is less than zero, the parabola is like this. Is, uh, a is greater than zero when it opens up. a is less than zero when it opens down. a is negative. And what is the minimum value? The minimum value is the y value of the vertex. The minimum value is 8. Or some teacher, we check with the teachers, do you have to say y equals 8, or just 8? But the minimum value is the y value of the vertex, 8. And I reviewed the function notation with x-intercepts and axis of symmetry, parabola, and different forms. And that brings us to the end of the video. If you like the video, click the like button, the subscribe button, notification bell. 
Visit my math website, www.mathworldexplained.com to find more information about me, my videos, and the content. That's the content that's on my YouTube channel, Math Fully Explained. Thank you for viewing my video. Bye-bye.